is a good question. Okay, I think my favorite word in Icelandic is fahta rettast. That is that directly means it will be okay, no matter how bad it is. We always think it's going to be good in the end, and that's just the lifestyle here in Iceland. Fahta rettast. Grazie. Uh, grazie, which means thank you. Growing up, my grandparents, my parents, everybody's just taught us to say thank you, thank you for everything, to appreciate everything, and that is the word I use the most, by far. <laughs> Aku cinta Indonesia. It means that I love Indonesia. Slancha. It's, it means cheers to health and happiness. <laughs> my favorite dish is kam salad. Papaya salad. Svichkova. It's a... Uh, Dumpkins with sauce and with meat, and it's really, really delicious. Anything that has macaroni pie as a side is my absolute favorite. It is a pasta dish, really. It has pasta, lots of spices, herbs, and cheese, and it's not your traditional mac and cheese. You have to have a Bajan macaroni pie. It's gotta have the hot sauce in it. It has to have the herbs, the bread crumbs. It's gotta be baked to perfection to have that nice, crisp coat of cheese at the top. It's amazing. Thanks, pretty. Think lots of jewels. Think sexy and elegant. Look, I'm not one to ruin surprises, but what I will tell you is that my finals gown, like every single thing I have done up until this point, it's intentional and it carries a message that is going to be impactful and powerful and communicated with conviction in a way that I think people have not seen before. I actually only saw the picture of it. I have to go to my fitting, but I saw a picture of it a couple weeks ago in a meeting and my, that I think that's when it became real for me that I was going to Miss Universe. I saw the gown and I just envisioned myself in it and I envisioned Barbados being called into a top 10 and that's when I got really overwhelmed and flooded with emotion and exciting excitement. In general here in Iceland, we have just been kind of taking it slow and just enjoying the moment. But I think the biggest way we are preparing is definitely with Angelo and he is someone, he's not not only my fitness instructor, he's kind of also like my therapist. So he just, he's, he's so inspirational and he makes me feel really ready to take on this whole journey that is ahead of me. So I'm preparing for this year's composition, uh, mostly psychologically, not just physically. Um, I want to be able to impact people. I want to be able to represent my country to the best of my abilities. I've been taking classes, English classes, public speaking, makeup classes or so much things like I cannot even count it and also I'm doing focusing to my advocacy so that I really realize that I am here right now it's not only for me but it is also for people around me. I was really being um, asked over the years by one of the chaperones she was telling me what a great experience it was and my best friend had decided to enter the same year as me and I was just like, you know what? Let me shoot my shot. Let me say yes to an opportunity. And since then, I actually have grown and learned so much. And I think I'm probably a huge pageant fan now. I've been following all different kinds of pageants because I think there's so much you can learn just from listening to the other delegates share their stories. Because while we're all going to Miss Universe with a platform, I think the art of listening is also gonna be so important because all the incredible women are gonna have a great story to share. So Miss Universe is all always been an arena that I have loved. I used to watch it with my mum when I was a little girl and it was it was just exciting. It was inspiring. You see these beautiful women using their platform to drive tangible change but admittedly I never saw myself as somebody who was perhaps capable of taking up space in that arena and being a proud five foot three woman of color I thought all the odds are against me and that's not an arena for me. But in 2019, I saw the diverse cohort of women that came through the Miss Universe Australia, that program. And the winner that year was Priya Sarau, who's an Indian Australian lawyer. And she completely shattered any misperceptions that I had. I believe the social stigma that I see in my country is that often immigrants are treated quite differently and whether it is learning the language itself or adapting to the culture here in Iceland, I think it's something that we have to be more 
you know, patient on because it's not guaranteed and Iceland, it, Icelandic is a difficult language and if coming here into this country where everything is kind of like a small village and everybody knows everyone and this new person that is arriving is someone that is not going to have that same safety net that we have here. You don't really talk about mental health and more specifically that men and boys don't talk about their mental health. That you should man up and just pack those feelings away. I believe that society needs to start treating each and every single individual who's a member of it as an equal on every single level, be it education, be it work, be it sex, be it race, be it gender, be it love, be it anything. We need to start um, treating each other as equal. It is only in this way that we can move forward together as one and reduce so many crimes and things which are hurting so many people and individuals within our society.